Hello and welcome to another episode of Ken Training. Today's training, what we're going to do is we're going to install an attic fan. It is winter here in SoCal and during the summer months this uh, two-story dwelling gets pretty hot on the second level compared to the first level. It's extremely noticeable. So um, I'm going to install an attic fan. Got the fan right here. Go through the unboxing. I already started this uh, project so I'll kind of show you where I'm at on this and uh, what my intentions are and, and, and so forth. This is the second fan that I purchased. Um, the first fan that I purchased was a 1600 CFM fan pulling 4 amps and when I uh, turned it on and did a test run, it the sound level produced 80 decibels. And to me that was unacceptable. Uh, I don't want that loud of a fan. This particular fan that I purchased here is rated at 1450 uh, CFM and it only pulls 1.3 amps which is dramatically amazing compared to 1600 CFM and 4 amps. But it's not the CFM so much that I'm interested in, it's the sound decibel rating. So I haven't even unboxed this one. So I'm going to do an unboxing and then um, do a test run and then uh, see what the uh, decibel reading is. I downloaded a free app on my cell phone so this way I can just uh, put that free app on, put, do, do the fan and then see what it is and I'll show you guys that. Okay, here's the fan right here and you can see that it just, uh, it's a GAF power attic fan. Uh, let's see here, there's a CFM rating somewhere. There, there it is, 1450 CFM. Now what they don't tell you is they don't tell you the, um, the decibel rating, but they do tell you the amp draw. The amp draw is uh, 1, 1 1.3 amps is what the spec rating was. Now here you can see I've made up a small test cord and I'm just going to plug that in. I got a switch there and then uh, right there on the ends I'll, I'll terminate that right to the fan and I'll get to that right now. So let me uh, open this box up and see what's inside. Alright so here's my workbench. Got the fan unboxed. Here's the uh, data plate on the fan. You can see it's 120 volt 1.35 amps and there's the model number right there. Uh, EGV5. Uh, this is probably the manufacturing date, 72618. Oh, I should mention that I, oh, and this is the manufacturer is a master flow. I did purchase this fan at the Home Depot for $85 plus tax. Now, one thing about this fan that's different than the other fan that I purchased is that this fan has an external capacitor rated at uh, 10 microfarads. You can see that right there. The other a uh, fan that I purchased did not have an external capacitor. This is probably why this motor is able to do 1400 CFM at only 1.35 amps because uh, this motor is extremely much more efficient. But we got to do our decibel rating. We'll do that right now. It has an external, uh, I mean, uh, it has a thermostat that came with it. Uh, the setting is from um, 60 degrees up to 120 degrees and this is what it looks like on the inside. Ah, come on. Um, and it came with uh, this packaging here too. So this way I can uh, attach to here the, uh, the, uh, the bolts in order to um, to put that on. So it did, it did come with this uh, package of hardware. Um, now looking at the uh, thermostat, oh one thing that uh, that it did not come with is this. So you'll see that when they go through, they just go through it like um, through the metal, but you need to use one of these here, which is just a, a, a clamp connector. I don't know why it says non-metallic. It actually is metallic. Oops, it actually is metallic. But anyways, I uh, just got a uh, package of these for like a dollar seventy at the Home Depot. So this way when I come out of here, uh, I can terminate through here properly. 
Now the way that they got the wiring hooked up, there's two wires that come out of here. There's a white and a black, so obviously it's a hot and a, hot and a neutral. So what they did was they run the neutral uh, directly straight out, but they run the hot. It comes over to one side of, of the T-stat, and then and then they run the other wire coming out of the T-stat coming out. So when you when you connect up, you have two lines right here. If you want to go through the T-stat, just lower that all the way to 60 degrees. Uh, so this way the thermostat switch is closed. And then uh, <clears throat> when I connect up my, my switch here, <clears throat> my temp switch, because I want to do a test fit right here, I'm just going to go uh, uh, white to white, black to black, and uh, wire nut that up. I got a couple of extra wire nuts right here. So I'm going to do that right now. Off all right, I'm all set to do my little test here. I got the fan wired up with a couple of wire nuts, thermostats set down low. Uh, I got an amp meter there so we can check the amps and I got a decibel meter over there. So let's go ahead and turn it on. All right, the, uh, hold on a second. Alright, so there's our amp draw, 1.16 amps. Here's our decibel rating. Uh, it says that it's the same as an alarm clock. 76 amps. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> 70. 76 decibels, that's decibel rating. It's jumping up because I'm doing the talk in there. Oops, hold on, I don't want to buy anything. Now, as far as the airflow goes, it's a little hard for you guys to see this. Let me see here how I can do this. You know what, it's not as powerful as the 1600 CFM. That thing, that thing it seemed to be a lot more powerful. But considering that this one only pulls the one amp, it's so much more efficient, it's gonna cost three times less to run this motor than it is to run the other motor. I do wish that that was a little bit quieter because the sound that we're hearing right there, I'm going to have to live with that sound <laughs> uh, every, when the fan runs. And I'll grant that it's going to be up in the attic, but still, I'm trying to, you know, have it as quiet as possible. Let me show you how quiet it is without the fan. So it's pretty noticeable. On. Let me do this. Let me walk out. I'm just going to walk out and see what it is behind this door. I'm just on the hallway now. Actually, you cannot hear it. Up there is the attic where the fan is going to be located. And I already started the wiring here. Um, uh, this, I'm going to have a switch right here that's going to be a manual override. And I've already ran the uh, wires uh, coming down to the uh, switch. You can see here I've got a 12, 12 3. And since I'm going to be uh, putting in a switch right here and I'm running a 12 3, uh, I decided to go ahead and pull a 12 2, which is this cable, uh, down and put a receptacle right there. Now I do have already an existing receptacle in the hallway right there, but um, as long as I'm into this project and it's so easy to put an extra one right down there, I just went ahead and did that. And I'll show you where I tie, where I, uh, everything's going to be tied in in the attic. All right, so getting back to this, I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and keep this fan. I'm not going to exchange it. I'm not going to try to get a, a, a quieter one. I'm just gonna. This is this is gonna be the fan I'm gonna do the install on. I'm very impressed with the amperage. 
So um, whatever the sound is, it is. Uh, there's going to be a small sound. You can see it. Let's see what the decibel rating is when I dropped it off. Hold on. You see here? 43 without me talking. With me talking, it kind of brings it up to... I don't know, I guess it depends on how much I'm doing the talking there, but I don't know, 70. And then you put the fan on. Seventy-five. All right. All right. It is what it is. I'm gonna get this fan installed. Here we go. Okay. This is the switch that I'm gonna be installing, and this particular switch is a combination. Um, what they call a combination. Uh, oops. Sorry. A combination switch and pilot light by Leviton. So here's your your screws, uh, the way that it works out. So what they want you to do, this is why I needed to run a 12-3 to this particular switch. You put the hot black leg here, you put the white leg here, you put the red leg here, that'll be the traveler wire, uh, as the manual override going back to the thermostat to turn it on. I, I, I mean past the thermostat actually. And then this is just a ground lug. And so when you turn this switch on like that, it, not, it, it, it closes the switch from this terminal to this terminal here. By the way, that's brass and this one's black. And this one here is silver for the neutral to the pilot light. So when you turn the switch on, it closes this switch to this switch, and it also provides power to the hot side of the pilot light, which has a neutral here to tell you when the motor is on. So that's that I did this particular switch rather than just a standard light switch, like here's just a standard wall light switch on the wall with no pilot light. That This switch does not require a neutral. This switch does require a neutral because it has a pilot light. And that's why I had to run a 12.3 rather than um, uh, a 12.2. Okay, if you did a 12-2, the uh, it would be it would be different. This is just an example. This is a 14-2, but when you have a 14-2, uh, the jacketing is uh, white. If this was a, if this was 12 gauge, it would be yellow. Um, with a and the reason what determines how what wire size I'm going to run just depends on the breaker size. I'm connecting to a 20 amp breaker. So I want to run everything 12 for my circuit um, and not run uh, 14 gauge. This would be connected to a 15 amp circuit. But just to give you an, an example, the 12, uh, the 14-2 uh, uh, has two conductors that are sheathed, a white and a black, so hot and neutral, and an, and an unsheathed ground wire, which is this bare copper wire right here. Well, on this pilot light, if I was to run the black wire here on this hot and to run this white wire here on this one, well then that means I would have had to run the neutral wire in an unsheathed jacket, which I'm not going to do. So uh, that's why you need to have a... Tw uh, 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 a 12-3 in my particular case because it comes with three sheath conductors and a bare copper wire so I can do everything right here. And I could also uh, parallel off of this uh, pilot light to feed the receptacle that's going to be down below. Now the box that I'm going to install on the, um, the where this is uh, located uh, because I'm, I'm going to be doing a, uh, uh, a jumper here, so I'm going to have 12-3 uh, coming out, 12-2 going down to the outlet. I just got an extra deep box so I could uh, 
have all those have all the pigtails inside here this particular box is a uh, 20 I think they refer to it as a 20 cubic inch box um, as opposed to the one that's underneath it which is like a 14 cubic inch standard box this is an extra deep box here um, okay so that's that all right I'm going to start down here and I'm just going to go ahead and put this um, old dwarf box in the wall right here and tie this in and get the switch all hooked up so when I go upstairs I'll just have to deal with this one wire here for uh, everything so I'm just going to go ahead and, and do that but basically what I'm going to do is I'm just going to feed in uh, uh, this uh, jacket and feed in this one from the from the bottom tie everything together and then put it into the into the switch so I'm going to do that right now all right so here's the box the old work box put in so what I do is I uh, cut out with my utility knife the uh, a little bit of drywall here 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 and here so when this sits in it sits in flush uh, so this way when the cover plate goes on it doesn't uh, have a gap or bow out when I do my um, my sheathing uh, I want my sheathing to be visible inside the box like this right here so that you can actually see at least a half of an inch of uh, sheathing so uh, here's one where I haven't uh, pulled the sheathing off of it yet let me show you how I do that alright so basically I'm just going to take my utility knife I'm going to come in here and uh, down the center like just about the last half inch here score that then what I do is I take a pair of needle nose pliers okay so after I break this out right here with this with the small slit what I'm looking for is I'm looking for the ground wire which is right here hold on I almost got it come on okay there we go wow once I get the ground wire up then what I can do is I can hold this down while I pull that up and get this broken up like this and then just pull it up into the box then what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate out I'm going to separate everything out like this and then have about an inch of that sheathing still there, half inch of that sheathing. Now I'll take a pair of diagonal side cutters and not touching these wires, just hitting the sheathing. Then I'm just going to go ahead and trim that out. So that way I've got that in there clean. Uh, it's just a little bit of that. There we go. So now I'm ready to go ahead and do some pigtailing and uh, and get my switch my switch hooked up. So let me and then uh, and then I'll put all the wires back in there. So, all right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I pigtail off the uh, the ground wire. But basically, it's the same process for all this product except for the red, which doesn't need a pigtail. Okay, so I got the wire coming down the wall this is the, this is uh, going to be the, the ground feed this is the ground going to the outlet below and then this is a ground wire that I'm going to use just to ground my um, light switch now in this particular case it's a plastic box so I don't need to ground the box itself otherwise I would ground the box so what I did was is I trimmed up uh, these two bare coppers uh, to what I uh, so that they're equal so I got all three of them equal. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my lineman's pliers here, grab it like so, and go ahead and twist them up.
much I got everything twisted up reasonably good. All right. Everything is nice there. Give myself a little bit of a And since I got three 12s, I'm going to use a, um, a red wire. All right, but pretty much that's it right there. And then what I'll do is on my uh, on this wire that's going to the actual switch. I only need about that much. And when I do the uh, determination, uh, let me just go ahead and show you how I'll do this. So then I'll just go ahead and give myself a, a little hook here. Now, when you do your screw onto the uh, onto this, this loop has to be in the direction that you're tightening it, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to put that on. Hang on. Come on. Get in there. Okay. Now, when I tighten this up, you'll see that as I tighten the screw, it tightens and it brings this copper tighter into the screw. If I had done that backwards, it would go the opposite way. This is per code, you got to do it that way. Uh, not the other way, that would be uh, non-code compliant. So, anyways, uh, pretty much that's everything that I'm going to do with the, uh, the white and the black. On the red wire, all I have to do is just hook that onto this traveler wire right there. And then I can put this and button this back and, uh, together and then this section will be done and then I can deal with that wire up in the attic. So I just want to kind of show you the process of how I'm going to do all this and then I'll tuck everything in inside the, uh, the box here. When I tuck my wires in, if I can, I always try to have my wire nuts up rather than down. Only if, there should never be any water in here, but hypothetically if there was ever any water in here, I'd rather have the water hit here and go over the wire nut and then down through the box bottom rather than upside down where it can collect and rust out inside of the actual wire nut. So uh, I always try to put my wire nuts up like that, like a little rain shield. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. Alright, here's my final terminations. So, got the white there coming over, going over here to the silver screw. Black pigtail right here coming over, going over to the br brass screw right there. All the terminations are done with the correct direction. And then the red traveler wire, no pigtail required, just comes straight down right on the black screw here. And I just go ahead and grounded my pilot light switch right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, by the way, in case it's not abundantly clear, the electricity is uh, not, there's no, this, these are all dead wires, there's nothing hot here. Um, just in case you're not familiar with electricity and wiring and all that. Okay, so I am going to uh, go ahead and button everything up here and get this switch uh, in here so I can just uh, move into the, uh, into the attic next. That's the next step. On this box, the switch plate was still sticking out, I don't know, maybe uh, 3 sixteenths of an inch or so and I didn't like it. So I had to recess the box further back, 3 sixteenths of an inch here, 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 and here. Uh, now the cover plate should go on flush. I'll put it on right now. Alright, there's the final product. Just the way I like it. No gapping anywhere around. 
Uh, cover plates on for the uh, the outlet as well. All right. Next, I'm going to go up into the attic. Okay, here's an overview of the attic. So climbing up the hatch, I just got an extension cord here so I could uh, plug in a light fixture. And that's where the fan is going to be located right there. And I already did a bunch of prep work where uh, I built it out because it was it had this um, 2x6 or 2x8 whatever this uh, board is right here it had that supporting uh, this roof my, I don't even know what the correct term is roof truss roof roof support whatever um, and I didn't want to disturb that so what I did was is I just built out an inch and a half thickness the thickness of this 2x8 all the way around this um, this opening and then what I did was is I just uh, cut some cardboard strips you can see and I just stapled it all the way around I'm gonna use like a cardboard gasket all the way around rather than a silicone gasket now I did use some uh, silicone I've got some uh, caulking tubes right here so what happened was is when I when I built out the um, uh, the strip and went through everything, I went ahead and sealed all the way uh, around. So once the fan goes up, it'll be airtight uh, going in, in, with the air exiting that way. Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's talk about electricity. So I decided that I'm going to get my electricity right here. There was a... Um, a four inch octagon box there and I purchased an extension ring so I can uh, extend off of that so that's where I'm going to uh, acquire my my power once I get the power from there I'll just uh, come up this wood here come across here and then I'll come down into the uh, thermostat I'll parallel off of that and uh, and bring it down uh, over this way and then that's going to feed uh, I'm gonna put they, they don't have any uh, outlets up here in the attic so here's a picture of the the whole attic and there's another uh, gable vent over there and then on the uh, outsides perimeters there's also some of those um, perforated holes roof venting so and then there's you can see your insulation here I gotta kind of go through and clean it up a little bit but uh, and luckily by the way I'm working here in the winter so it's nice and cool I'm not sweating I waited to the winter for this project uh, okay so I'm gonna put a duplex receptacle there so instead of me having to run an extension cord when I need to bring in an additional light fixture I can just bring up the light and plug it in right there so I'm gonna be powering that now this is the um, you see this is the other end of that wire where I ran it to the um, uh, the uh, pilot light switch there. Um, the pilot light switch, manual override switch for the fan. So this is a 12-3. I'm going to run this across over to here and then run it over to this, um, this box where I'm going to put a duplex receptacle because this uh, attic does not have any receptacles and I want to have a convenience outlet so as long as I'm into this electrical project with all this wire just put an outlet in right there for a few dollars anyways I'll do that put an outlet in right there and then carry the power with the traveler wire coming back over to the fan thermostat control because that red traveler wire is a manual override overriding the thermostat so I can just turn it on with the flick of that switch okay so the first thing that I want to do was I'd like to get this uh, fan uh, mounted up. All right, so what I've done is I've cut the piece of wood that I'm going to use as the backing for my fan. The piece of wood that I have is just a piece, piece of half inch MDF and I cut it so that it is exactly uh, 28 inches by 17 inches. I determined the size of my opening. I did a little sketch here of exactly uh, how I'm going to mount. 
And then I uh, overbuilt this by a little bit so that there'll be an overhang on all four sides by about an inch from where the screws are going to go. So that way the MDF... Oh, by the way, I would have preferred to have used uh, half-inch plywood, but I didn't have any plywood laying around. I happen to have half-inch MDF, so that's what I'm going to use. Now, the way that the, um, the manufacturer of this fan wanted, wants me to install these is that they want me to install these so that they go kind of like this with that much of a gap right there. I am not going to do that. Uh, what I've done is I've already uh, uh, figured out exactly how I want my fan to sit uh, according to the thermostat because I know I want the thermostat to be up like this because when it's on the wall I can read it it's not upside down. So I had to switch this thing from the, the original location here to here. I'll figure out that mounting once I'm up in the attic. Um, now, what I'm going to do here is, so this is going to be installed right about like this. And uh, anyways, I've already got my circle uh, cut out here. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut that with my jigsaw, which I've got right here in the box. Here's a picture of it. So anyways, I'm just going to cut that with the jigsaw and uh, lay it down. I'll probably lay it down so that this sits in here. I'll have to drill new holes for my, uh, for my brackets here, but I'll deal with that uh, once I uh, cut out the jigsaw hole. All right, so here's the piece of wood. And there's the hole, okay? I put a couple of marks here and a couple of marks there so I know exactly how I want it lined up. So basically what I'm doing is I'm just putting it in, lining up my marks down right there. And, oh, hold on, okay, so then just putting it in so that it's flush up against the floor. And then you can see where the, uh, the old holes were right there, where they had that uh, originally lined up. You can see how much of a difference that is. So basically I'm just going to be kind of going in the same location, right about there, and this one's going to go right about there, like so, and then two on the other side. And then I'm just going to use a drill bit, drill my own holes here, use a, um, a half inch uh, screw here and here to secure it to the wood. Then the fan will be physically attached to this piece of wood. Then I can just go ahead and put this piece of wood up in the attic and then the fan will be physically mounted and then it's just a matter of hooking up the electrical. So I'm going to go ahead and um, attach the fan to this uh, wood right now and um, rock and roll. Alright so here's the back side of the fan after everything's attached. I went and took some um, some caulking here that I had some extra in this particular case it's just an all-purpose um, interior construction adhesive and I used that on this side even though there wasn't much of a gap here but I went all the way around this is what it looks like on the opposite side so what happened was is, is I put the brackets on the way that I wanted to but the even though uh, the, the fan was resting on the floor and this uh, wood was on the floor the fan was protruding through a little bit too much and that's going to mess me up on the other side uh, because I got my dimensions here and I know that the interior is 13 and 5 eighths and this fan is greater in diameter than that. So uh, I know that the edges here are going to hit the inside so I really want the wood to go all the way around not the fan protrude through. So I had to bring the fan back a little bit so I just stuck some cardboard washers in there. Uh, on the four legs just to bring this fan back so this way it was pretty much flush with the wood. Uh, in retrospect I wish I'd have just simply drilled holes a little bit further uh, uh, up this way and done it that way but that's uh, uh, this is where I'm at. So this is anyways it's ready to be installed uh, and then we'll go from there up in the attic. All right, I just finished, and the fan is off. But for some reason, this is up the uh, 
pilot light is on so I went over the instructions on the schematic which is here and it looks like I got a couple wires crossed I need to uh, flip the black and red wires um, that was my bad so I just have to uh, open this light switch and swap the black wire and the red wire and reverse those two then that should work appropriately this is what the fan sounds like And now let's go up and see the fan. Hold on, Let the camera get focused. Sounds pretty good. Um, I got to do a decibel reading. All the wiring is complete. Hold on, let me get up. So on the wiring. I took it from over there, brought it up that column, carried it across, then I carried it down into a junction box right there. I got to put a cover plate on it, which is right uh, somewhere around here. Just a cover plate right there. So I'm going to put a cover plate right there, and then that's just a junction box. Then what I did was, you can see I got three wires going in there. So what I did was, is one wire going up is the one that controls the fan by the thermostat plus the override that you're that you're seeing me control it with right now fan override switch I still have to test the thermostat and then I also installed an outlet right there I'm going to just make sure that my wiring is good just a convenience outlet just for myself so I can uh, hook up a light without running an extension cord like this down through the hatch big pain so now I can just grab power right up here uh, what I'll do is I'll go see what the decibel rating is outside. Alright, so here's outside of the house. Right up there is the where the fan is physically located. And then here I am at the walkway just prior to going in. And we're getting 50 decibels without me talking. Let me just be quiet for a minute. Fifty is pretty quiet. As a matter of fact, when you look at fifty, hold on a second. It's even labeled as a quiet street, so I should not receive any complaints, like a noise complaint coming from the neighbor, uh, and that should be good. All right, I just shut the fan off, so the fan is physically off right now. I shut it off by the breaker. Here is our decibel reading without a fan. Forty eight to forty nine. So basically it's just a two decibel difference from the closest point where you can stand to where the fan is physically located. So it really did not appreciate any sound level outside of, of the dwelling at all and so anyways, that's that. Okay, I changed it around. There you go. Now it's correct. I just, that was stupid on my part. So that's good. Then, you know that I installed an outlet down here. And so I plugged that in, of course. I do an outlet, I always check, and I'm like, what the heck? One light in the center? Well, when you look here in the legend, it says that one light in the center is an open ground. Then, I move this thing around slightly, and look what happens. Stupid thing shows up. So, 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 then, so then the light goes like that if I just move it around. So then I hit the switch to turn it on. Well, that time it stayed solid, but when I was testing earlier, the light turned off. So I was like, what the heck? So, anyways, I went and uh, uh, tested this out on another outlet. Here's inside the bathroom. This is a GFCI. I go to plug it in. Come on. Hold on a second. All right, well, now it's working good, but when I did it earlier, it did not do so good. 
there it is. Now it's just showing one light. And you're like thinking to yourself, what the heck? So what I did was, is I, um, I got my multimeter here because I'm trying to figure out what in the world's going on. So when I take my multimeter, uh, let's go to voltage AC and, uh, and plug that in. Uh, now it's the, it said that it was open ground. If it was open ground, you would not get voltage going this way. And you can see I got um, 120 volts. So I know that I've got a good ground source here. And here it's showing an open ground. So it, and then if you move this thing, it it's like you know what's the word I want to use? It's like intermittent. So I must this ground leg here must be internally kind of shorten out so this tool here is bad I gotta get me another one of these which is kind of disappointing because uh, I didn't do uh, you know I'm just using it whatever all right since we know that we cannot trust the uh, the other tool in order to check if this outlet is properly wired I'm just going to use my regular multimeter here <coughs> on the hot leg neutral and there's 120 volts and then go over to the ground so I know I'm properly grounded right there because it's giving me voltage from hot to uh, ground and then if I go from ground to neutral nothing which is good so this is properly wired okay so let's go up and check the fan upstairs alright so now I want to check out my outlet up here by the way when I do my outlets I was label the breaker number on the uh, cover plate so let's see what we got here uh, okay 120 from hot to neutral and now from hot to ground uh, come on computer All right, let's see if we can get it that way hot to ground oops yeah I wired it properly Okay, I actually have it plugged in right now, so I can plug in for my light fixture. Okay, now we've already tested the fan with the from downstairs. Let's go ahead and test it now with the um, thermostat. My my walking distance here is absolutely horrible. I have to. Um, well, it's one of the things that made this fan installation so difficult. There's nothing for me to stand on in this huge section right here where um, and there's a in this in the way the house is constructed there's a large span from here to here so I gotta step on uh, just one uh, uh, ceiling uh, joist right here just go like that and then put my second foot over there to do everything. So it's extremely awkward to work here. So be happy. Everything's said and done. And now I don't have the tripod. I got it set at 120. Let's bring it down. Let's see what time what temperature it kicks in at. It's about 60 degrees up here. Alright. Here is your fan. Check out to see if there's any anything that's uh, any blown out. I got it all sealed up pretty tight here, so it's all pretty it's all pretty good. It should be perfectly fine. It should give me many years of service, actually. But um, all right, so let me go ahead and set the thermostat what I'll do is I'll set the thermostat to well this is like a winter mode because it's winter here in SoCal I think I'll just set it to 85 and I'll just try that I've always got the manual override switch downstairs all right so there's the completed fan installation up again in the attic again uh, my electrical Let's see here what I did was is I took it from that junction box right there, brought it up, putting staples every so often, 
brought it across over to there down oh, I got to put a cover plate okay so now that I've got the fan working I know that the fan works hundred percent it's fully tested now that now that I've done all of that I've got to realize what I've done to the to the house dwelling I've now introduced a mechanical fan up in the attic that was not introduced in the past and I have to think about how that's going to affect the home itself now um, what I'm concerned about is natural gas and venting now in this particular dwelling there are two natural gas appliances the first one is the furnace that's sitting right next to me over here and, and it's, so it's on the second level in a closet and it receives its intake air from the attic and now that I've introduced a mechanical uh, device I'm concerned about the pilot and the exhaust gases and if I'm going to have any back drafting so like here's your here's your example the furnace is running you turn on the mechanical attic fan is the fan so powerful that's going to actually suck out from the flue gases of the furnace and and disrupt that now generally speaking the furnace and the fan should not be on at the same time but they can be on at the same time the fan is set up to only really be on when the attic is 85 degrees Fahrenheit when the attic is 85 degrees Fahrenheit the house probably doesn't need any heating it probably needs cooling so so the so the threat that that's going to happen is extremely the, the, the likelihood that you're going to have the exhaust fan on and the furnace on simultaneously is extremely small. I just want to know if indeed, if, if that is going to happen, do I now need to be concerned about um, carbon monoxide poisoning for the, for the people that live here in the house because uh, I'm definitely going to have back, back, back drafting. I'm just want to do some testing to determine what what how is the house going to react when the furnace is on and the fan is on simultaneously so that's what I'm going to do right now uh, oh the second appliance uh, natural gas appliance in this dwelling is the hot water heater but that is located in the garage and it receives its makeup air intake from the garage completely not associated with the attic so I don't have to worry about that the only natural gas appliance and venting that I'm concerned about is for the furnace so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the fan on. I can hear it kick on. It's got a you know it's got a slight sound, and I've also got the hatch on. I put the hatch plate back on here. Now normally there's a light fixture cover that goes here. I got it on the ground, but I'm going to leave it off for right now just because it's a pain to put it back up. And I'm going to go check out the natural gas appliance. Check out the pilot right now, and then we're going to fire up the furnace and we're going to see how the uh, how the flames react and we're going to try to make a determination on if we have any backdrafting with that fan on under these conditions so here we go alright so right there's the attic that's the fan switch to turn it on the fan is on right now this is the closet that houses the furnace there's the uh, makeup return air on the second level here's the furnace itself it is dark in here I make it bright. <clears throat> All right, I grabbed a flashlight just so that I can try to show you. Okay, so right there, right there in the back, that's the fresh air intake that goes up the back wall and then grabs its air uh, through the attic back there. This particular um, closet also has some broken drywall, and I've thought about how to repair that but I don't think that's going to be repaired until after this furnace gets fixed, uh, replaced. This furnace is original but hey it still works. Alright so here is the pilot. You can see the pilot light right there and it actually looks okay. It looks like it's still drafting even under these conditions it looks like it's still drafting into the uh, heat exchanger and then up the flue. That's just the pilot. I'm going to go downstairs, I'm going to kick on the furnace and I'm going to fire it up right now.
All right, so here's the thermostat. I'm going to turn that to heat. It's currently 69 down here, but I'm going to change. I'm going to jack this up to uh, 78 just because I want it to run. I'm going to run upstairs right now. Okay, you can see it just fired off. And now I'm just watching the venting to see if all the gases are going to go up <laughs> and not enter the house. Now a couple good things that I have in my favor. Number one, I have a CO detector mounted right there. So if indeed I have backdrafting in any condition, with the fan, without the fan, whatever, I've got a CO detector. I also have a smoke detector right there. So I got both items right near this furnace just to try to just to keep the occupants here as well protected as possible. All right. But with the furnace on, it's actually looking pretty good. I want to do one more test just to see how things go. All right, so the fan is the, the fan just kicked on. So now the fan is on uh, to bring heat into the house. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to light this piece of paper on fire and and then put it out. And the, and I'm going to let me show you. I'm going to put it. I'm going to get this on fire. Get a little fire going. And then I'm going to put it out. And I'm going to have this produce a little bit of smoke and I'm watching the smoke to see if it gets drafted in or if it doesn't get drafted in. And it is drafting in. You can if the camera I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but I can clearly see it where um, the the smoke from this paper is going right into the furnace. So there is zero backdraft. Do that again. Get a little fire. Put it out. Okay. All right, then just make sure the fire is out 100%. All right, good. Okay, I have shut off the furnace on the thermostat, so it's cycling down right now. It takes a minute for it to shut off, and I shut off the fan here. That concludes my testing. So now I know definitively that when the exhaust fan is running, the one that I just installed, and the furnace is running, the natural gas appliance that gets its fresh air intake from the attic, that the appliance, which is the furnace, it does not backdraft under that condition with the size fan that I installed. Now, of course, if you had installed hypothetically, let's just say a 1600 CFM or a 2000 CFM to move more air, then maybe that size fan would produce backdrafting. This is an unknown variable. Uh, exactly how things are going to react until you do exactly what I just did, which is a little bit of testing. Um, a lot of videos that I watch on YouTube did not really go into this aspect of the, uh, the, the job. You know, a lot of guys just take the fan, unbox it, hook up the electrical, they don't hook up a, a pilot light switch like this, and they don't do a lot of other, and then I also put a couple convenience outlets in there just to give myself a little bit of uh, uh, more convenience the place to plug into just to make my life easier so so hopefully this was a good video for you if you did go ahead and please click on like and uh, if you want to leave a comment please leave a comment uh, my youtube channel is ken training i have other various videos of different subject matter on there feel free to check it out i will see you on the flip side